Thanks for coming. I really appreciate you being here tonight. Uh, I guess I'll start with the social stats. We were the number eight trend in the United States tonight. The, uh, the live stream was over 1.1 million total views. Um, again, it takes a good 24 hours for social and all this other stuff. These guys are telling me this is the largest drive live stream on the internet on a Saturday. Um, performance of the night, AJ and Wolverine and Trujillo and Bell. They all won $10,000 each, so congrats to them. Who's got the first question? Go ahead, brother. Obviously, you know, this is a learning on the job sort of experience. You know, you're putting on these events and everything like that. So I'm curious your reaction to the first live show you've put on and how do you think tonight went? I think it couldn't have gone any better. I mean, th there's so many things about launching this thing and going into the finale that remind me of, you know, the early days of the UFC. The cast of this thing reminded me of the first season of The, of the Ultimate Fighter and the finale was like the finale of the ultimate fighter for this thing. It's, it's very, very weird the way that this whole thing played out. But tonight was uh, a monster success. This has been a huge weight on my shoulders for the, last, for the last two months. I've been grinding to make this thing uh, successful. And so has my team, Frank, and everybody else that was a part of this. Uh, you couldn't have scripted tonight any better. How unique is a platform like Rumble where you can even have those views, the live views, right away, like almost immediately? How unique is it to have a product on that? How do I think that it's what? Huh? How did we? Yeah, I mean, this thing has, well, if you looked at the social numbers that I've been posting and showing you guys, over, think about this. This thing is eight weeks old. This didn't exist eight weeks ago. Didn't exist. The social media uh, channels for it didn't exist. None of this existed. We're over a billion views on TikTok alone, right? On Instagram, we did like 38.5 million views a week. And online with Rumble, the, the whole season did 15 million views globally. So, I mean, th these are obviously massive numbers. And it also proves that this thing like the UFC is global, but the, the social and streaming numbers are just fucking nuts. I mean, the worst power slap uh, post of the day did better than the best UFC post of the day on UFC's, uh, you know, okay. social. So, yeah, no, this thing's a fucking monster, man. Those are the positives. Was there anything you saw tonight that you'd like to change moving forward? You know, <clears throat> I'm, I'm kind of, tonight was so good. I'm just re re relieved and relaxed. You know, I'm, I'm super psychotic about live events and, and the television events and how they come off. That's why we spent a shitload of money on Thursday. We held a live event here on Thursday to practice for tonight, to make sure that tonight we're not we're without a hitch. I didn't see anything tonight that upset me, that made me pick up the phone and call, you know, the truck. But um, we'll, we'll take it all in. And, and to talk over the next few weeks. What's gonna happen now is, we're gonna do season two in Abu Dhabi, and I'm gonna bring in the best guys in the world from Russia, Poland, Eastern Europe, South Africa, and wherever else in the world, you know, we end up finding some talent. We'll, we'll film the show there, and then we'll, uh, those guys will take on the guys from this season. Sounds like a power slap World Cup, almost. Huh? It's like a World Cup for power. Exactly, exactly. Well, that's what I'm going to do immediately. I mean, listen, I, I, I know the formula for this stuff now. So we're, we're, we're going to move fast. And, you know, I, uh, I got a two-year deal with Rumble. So and the Abu Dhabi deal, we're, we're still working it out. But what I'd love to do is, is, is two years with them to do season two and season three over there. Obviously, you had the UFC tonight as well with Marab and PD on. I'm curious, did you get, get to watch the main event, and what did you think of it? Yeah, uh, 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 unbelievable fight. Usually, Peter Jan sets the pace in those type of fights. Tonight, Marab set the pace and, and uh, you know, put on a great performance, especially his first time going into championship rounds like that. You've made no secret that you don't love it when a guy doesn't want to fight his teammate. 
and Marab is clear that he will not fight Aljamain Sterling and he'll wait until Aljo moves up. So what do you do with him, right? Because you don't necessarily want to put him against other contenders, knock off other contenders before they can fight for the title. So what do you do with Marab? It's so funny you say that because I don't remember who the hell I was talking to the other day about this. And I was like, yeah, we don't have to deal with that bullshit anymore. Uh, you know, back in the early days, the camps were so small, you didn't have a lot of different options. So we had a lot of these guys saying, oh, he's my friend, he's my friend. You can still be friends and want what your friend has, you know what I mean? Um, it would be a really bad idea for Marab to go down that path. Is there a point where you sort of say, right, that's enough, you have a decision to make or you have to move divisions or what do you do with him? Yeah, so, so does Marab want a shot at the title or would Marab rather have people under him jump over him and him have to take on all these different, different tough guys when he's not even getting a title shot when he's next in line for it? That's a personal decision that he needs to make. If that's what he wants to do, I can tell you how that story ends. It's not, it's not a good ending to that story, but he's a big boy. He can figure that out on his own. Corey Swarga, Slap News. Dana. Hey. How proud, are you, how proud are you of your team here tonight pulling this off? Yeah, so we've been running hard. You know, we filmed this season of Slap. Uh, then had been planning for this live finale. We had the John Jones fight last weekend. We're filming the Ultimate Fighter at the same time. That ends Monday. Um, we've got London coming up uh, next weekend. I'm going to uh, film looking for a fight starting Monday. We've been running hard, man. So my team has been working. I, I probably forgot a couple things, too. There's other shit in there, too, but... Yeah, we, 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 we've been going, so I'm, I'm very proud of my team. I say it all the time. Not only are we the best in all of sports, we're, we're the best to ever do it, and that's a fact. Power Slap seems very personal for you. What motivates you to make this successful? Well, I started looking at this thing in 17, 18. Um, after COVID, obviously I got a lot healthier. Uh, you know, when I, when I started working with, with 10X, I feel like I'm 30 again. So I figured I'd take on, you know, th this challenge and, and try to make it happen. And um, it's, been, it's been good, you know, and I ain't going to lie. The media has definitely motivated me through this whole thing. I, w I, was, I was being a kind of a wise ass the other day at the press conference, but at the same time, I'm dead serious. Fucking bet against me. Bet against me. Tell me it's not going to happen. Tell me it's going to fail. I love it. I love every minute of it. K.O. Chris, how bad of a man is he? Yeah, he's incredible. I, I, I mean, this thing's just starting to grow. But, you know, as we, as we continue to bring in more and more talent, I mean, you can tell. You guys know. And even the people who want to hate it, who want to hate this so bad, you cannot deny that, that this is fucking exciting. It's different. It's fun. And I think what happens with a lot of people, especially the media, the older media, is that Anything new, anything that's different, anything that's, you know, this is the same exact shit they said about the UFC. Exactly the same. This will never be like boxing. This stuff is disgusting. This isn't a sport. These guys aren't athletes. And one of the things that I love about the guys who compete in this, these guys are like real guys. These guys work. They, 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 they're, they're very uh, middle America, Bible Belt, you know, t type people. Some of these guys work construction and have these other jobs, farmers. They have kids, they have families, and they see this as an opportunity, just like guys who were into mixed martial arts in the early days. And I love the stories behind these guys, and I love the, uh, the competitive spirit that they have. So I'm, I mean, I know you guys can tell I'm so fucking into this. I haven't been this fired up since like 2008 or 10, I don't know, in that ballpark somewhere. But this has been a, a really fun challenge for me. I've, I've really enjoyed it. How far, away are we, are, how far away are we from having these guys make slap their full-time their full career? We're, uh, there's real money in this now, you know? Much like the UFC again, when we talked about, uh, you know, season one of The Ultimate Fighter, me and the Fertitta boys put up 10 million bucks again to do this first season of uh, Power Slap and, and the finale, and here we are again. There were some incredible upsets tonight. Which one do you personally think was the most impressive? <clears throat> I was super excited 
for the last two weeks for AJ and Vern. Obviously, the two most powerful guys here, they knocked everybody out. Could AJ take the shot once we found out who won the coin toss? And if he could take the shot, could he knock Vern out? I mean, that thing couldn't have played out any more like the way we were, you know, the questions were all answered tonight. And, that, and that, the main event, you know, looked like, you know, Darius, had, the only guy Wolverine ever lost to was Darius. What, was it going to happen again? He takes Darius' slap and then knocks Darius out with his first slap. I mean, it's just, Vince couldn't script this shit. It was so good. No, absolutely. Um, you know, AJ is a custodian in a cardboard factory. You know, I'm sure you've worked with, you know, many millionaires. These guys are real down-to-earth people. Yeah. What does it mean for you to be able to improve the lives of all these individuals? Well, that's the thing about all the people who are shitting on this thing and hating on it. I mean, th these people that came and competed, first of all, these are all grown men and women who make their own decisions on, on, on wanting to compete in this sport, right? Number one. Number two, th you know, these guys are changing, you know, their families' lives. I mean, some of these guys, I mean, Frank, who, who, what, what kind of a number did somebody walk away with tonight that, that probably made the most for tonight? Yeah. I'm going to walk out of here with $45,000. You know what I mean? Um, and no, no, we're going to have the stories written tomorrow. Oh, this is disgusting. These people did this for $45,000. That's how this shit works. Some of these guys probably don't make $45,000 a year. They made it in one night. And now, you know, we're, we're on our way and this thing's going to grow. I mean, started out, you know, we used to drive Lorenzo Fertitta crazy when we first started the UFC. Everybody who competed here had jobs. So they would have to go, you know, train for this thing and do all this shit. And they had to go back and go back to work when they were done competing here. But that's, that's how things start. That's, how, you know, it's, it's the way you start a business. And uh, the people who came here in March to watch the, the first test fight that we did, I said, watch what we do with this thing in the next several months. And now I'll tell you all here tonight, watch what we do with this thing in the next two years. Have you spoken to anyone from the commission and what is their response on how tonight went? Yeah, I mean, no, I haven't. I mean, I'd, I'd ask them that. I'm not going to answer for the commission, but what I can say is I, I thank the commission for their hard work and, and everything they did to make tonight a successful night. Um, you know, a lot of talk about health and safety, a lot of uneducated people about, you know, the combat sports and a lot of doctors who like to get attention. Um, but the bottom line is we go o o above and beyond since day one on health and safety here. And uh, we're doing the same thing with SLAP. And, you know, the, the commission, this is the best commission in the world. I say it all the time. And I'm not just saying that because th there have been times that I've had my issues with this commission. But um, th there's been really strong times for the commission. There's been weaker times. We're at a very strong, you know, uh, point in time again for the Nevada State Athletic Commission. And I respect the shit out of them. When you started this, did you ever think the numbers that came in tonight would be where they are? Yeah, I did. So just like the UFC, when I believed that it could be what it is today, when I saw 350 million views on these events that look like, um, uh, you know, they were in a barn, I knew that if we brought legitimacy to it, production value, storylines, and all the things that we're the best at doing, um, it could be, you know, I mean, shit, if we came out and pulled 350 million views leading up to the, we're, we're over a billion just on one platform. I mean, I don't know if any of you are really wrapping your head around how big this is. I mean, we beat, we beat the NFL Super Bowl week by double. So if the NFL did 7 million, we did 14. We beat the WWE by double. We beat the UFC by double. I mean, we, we crushed everything on social media. Seven weeks ago, this shit didn't exist. And we've done over a billion views. You fucking wrapping your head around that? I mean, that's, it's, it's, it's a success level that's undescribable. What would you like to tell aspiring slappers 
What's the question? What would you like to tell aspiring athletes that would like to come into slap fighting? Well, I don't think I need to. I mean, everybody knows what we do here. If you look at what we've done for the sport of mixed martial arts, it's literally what we're going to do for slap. So, you know, and anybody who is into this, likes it, wants to do it. And, and like I say, th there's people that, are, that aren't going to like it. it and it's what I used to say about the UFC. It's, it's no problem. You don't have to like it. Don't watch it. It's that easy. I don't like fucking golf. You know what I do? I don't watch it, and I don't play it. So I never even think about it. It doesn't bother me at all because I don't fucking bother with it. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Hey, Dana. Uh, hey. Lorenzo is in the house. How is his, uh, how is his uh, reaction to power slap? Listen, th those, those guys are my ride or dies. So, uh, again, much like the UFC, I hit them up and said, I got an idea. And they said, we're in. You know, we, we love being in business with each other and, uh, you know, give us more opportunities to hang out and spend some time together and have some fun together. So um, let me tell you what, these days, not much gets Lorenzo out of the house. Lorenzo goes to station casinos, does his thing, and that dude's in bed by like 8 o'clock at night. So to get him out and, and, and get him back at an event is awesome. I'm, I'm, I love having him around. How surprised were you that uh, Ron put Darius down with, with one slap? shocked you know you know what i mean it's it's uh it's 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 what's so exciting about live sports though it doesn't matter if it's fucking football basketball boxing mma when you get live sports you never know what's going to happen man um hasbula was here last night um he didn't slap Marky Mark. There was a video coming out. Were you surprised he didn't slap mark mark Wahlberg? he wouldn't slap mark Wahlberg. yeah, yeah. he said i won't slap you i like you Fucking slaps everybody, but it won't slap Mark Wahlberg. Um, Hasbula's awesome. It was good to have him here. He flew out here for this event. And, uh, yeah, we've had fun with him this week. And the Nelk boys have been, you know, I mean, what the Nelk boys have done for this, for this guy is unbelievable. When, when the Nelk boys went out to Russia, this is how powerful Hasbula is. The Nelk boys went out to Russia, and they, um, they did all this cool shit with him. And, and uh, they said, you know what, we're going we're gonna to make a... We're going to make a Hasbulla full send t-shirt. They did, uh, they, they sold like $500,000 worth of uh, Hasbulla t-shirts in like 48 hours. Something ridiculous like that. And they gave him half the money for, for, for the stuff. So um, we did a deal with Hasbulla. We signed him to a deal. He's going to be in the video game and he gets his own fight kit, you know, and he got paid for that. So that dude's doing some cool shit and making some big money. And it couldn't happen to a nicer, nicer kid. I like him. Two last questions for me. For anybody, for, for, any, for anyone that's saying that you don't care about it and that you're only putting your, your time and effort into power slap, <laughs> well, what do you say to those people? Do, do I even need to answer that question? I mean, oh, come on. I, I, listen, anybody that wants to talk shit can come up with, with, with anything. No, and this is what I'm, I say this all the time. People have no fucking idea what I really do and what I don't do. And, and they don't know anything about this business. Nobody. Nobody knows anything about this business. If they did, they'd be doing what we do. Um, the UFC, we're coming off one of the biggest weekends in the company's history. The number one social fight of all time. It beat Conor and, uh, and Habib, right? Uh, the gate, the this, the that. It was like the fourth largest event that we've ever done tonight was a sellout o over at uh, at the um uh, you know the, the virgin what the fuck else do i need to do what else would you people like me to do you know what i mean if uh we weren't selling tickets we weren't putting on fights people wanted to see sponsorship wasn't through the fucking roof and the list goes on and on maybe you'd have something shut the fuck up and mind your business that's what I have to say about that. Now that I think about it, that's what I'll say. And finally, Peter Yan suffered his third, third straight loss. What do you think he goes from here? Yeah, um, listen, he's still one of the best guys in the world. He fought a guy in Marab tonight who was extremely motivated. And, you know, like I said, Jan usually sets the pace in these fights, starts a little slow, but then turns it on and, and, and grinds out victories tonight. That's what Marab did. You know, but Peter's still one of the best in the world, so.
You know, when you have number two versus number three, you know, when you lose, you can't say, oh, wow, this guy's, this guy's washed up or, you know, maybe he doesn't have it anymore. You just fought one of the best guys in the world. Hi, Dana. Hi. I just have two. I want to know um, when you're going to have a women's title match. A women's? Yeah, yeah, we're working on that. Um, it'll be interesting to see when we cast for Abu Dhabi um, how that plays out. Um, I'm sure we'll find some women over there. Yeah. Um, next question, when do you think you're going to have some fans in the arena? I had a lot of people reaching out asking for tickets, so people definitely want to come see it in person. Selling tickets? Is that the question? Yeah. Yeah, th so much like um, season one, the March event that we did, put this thing on TBS. We built a digital plan and a social plan around it. This, this was all a big test to see what worked, what didn't work. Um, and, you know, like I said, this is all a work in progress. Just like, I mean, if you watch the early days of the UFC, I mean, I played with the production forever. It took 22 years to get the production to where we are today. And now we're a lot better and smarter about that stuff. That's why, I mean, wh I mean what did you guys think of the, the live production for your first time? I mean, we just, last March was our first one. We didn't know what the hell, I didn't know we want a platform, we want a stage, we wanted this, we wanted that. And we kept playing with it, tweaking it, coming up with ideas. And I think we got to a really good place tonight for the first event. We did the rehearsal on Thursday. The rehearsal went very well. I was very happy with the rehearsal. So I knew tonight wouldn't be perfect, but it would be better than Thursday. So um, I'm really happy with the way it went tonight, and we'll continue to just get better and better. And we'll also, I, I said a ton of shit, but I didn't answer your question. Um, so now we start figuring out, do we do a few in the apex till we, when do we start traveling it? If we do, where do we go? And how do we, it's just, there's so much work that needs to be done to, to figure out all these, all these different um, questions that need to be answered. I'd love to see the coin toss like minutes before the slapping. That's my one, one thing that I'd love to see. You want to see the coin toss? The coin toss, right, yeah. bef right before they slap, so they don't have a lot of time to prepare. Eh, the problem is, the reason we can't do that is because for gambling. People will bet on who wins the coin toss. What's that? Yeah, they could still bet on that probably, but you got to do it earlier so that uh, you have time to, you know, the, again, brand new sport. They got to make lines for this stuff. And there was a lot of action on this thing tonight. Um, Lorenzo told me that, that there was actually a lot of action. No big, big money bet on it, but lots of action. So that's a really good start, too. Then the great question. I, for, I forgot to address that. Um, you know, all the books took it. And the other thing is, and I told you guys this before, is this works on social media and it's really good in bars. So all the big chains had this tonight. I'm sure you saw us posting it from... Buffalo Wild Wings to uh, Hooters to PT's Pubs here in Las Vegas. All the casinos took it. So for something, again, that, that's only seven weeks old, pretty huge to be in all these bars and, and, and all, on all these different platforms. It's been, it's, it's, been, it's been a good couple months. Go ahead. Dana right here. Uh, there was quite a few celebrities here for the first live event. How does it feel to have so many well-known people, not just take an interest in Power Slap, but also just want to come to the live event, uh, the first ever one? Yeah, great question. It was awesome, you know. And a lot of influential people online from, you know, the Nelk Boys, Aiden Ross, um, uh, Bulzarian, um, Risk House. I mean, I could go on and on for all the, the influencers that were in here tonight. So, um, yeah, I'm obviously thrilled about it. And, like, these guys, like, like Aiden Ross, Flew in from Miami to come to this fight, and he's flying back out tonight, I think. So, yeah, huge. Nelk boys, I mean, the, the, those guys never stop. They're always, they were just in Israel, and, you know, they came back for this thing. So, yeah, uh, I, I, I really appreciate the support. Now, you said, you, you said you're, like, psychotic with live events. You had two just today. Uh, you had a successful one at Virgin Hotels, and you had one here. Uh, is it one of those things where, like, you just want to sit back and smell the roses just of how successful like just this day was? Yeah. Um, 
there's not a lot of people that can pull off what this company can pull off. I remember, you know, before COVID, remember we, we canceled that event in Las Vegas and moved to um, California on like Christmas Eve and pulled off an event there a couple days after Christmas. Uh, two events in one night, in, in, you know, in the same city and the list goes on and on. I have such an incredible badass crew here that will run through walls to make stuff happen. Talented, hardworking, and uh, yeah, I, I love them. I love them all. Thanks, Dana. Thank you, brother. Hey, Dana. When it comes to the numbers, and you mentioned all of the social numbers that you have, are you guys looking at the demographics or even the specific countries and seeing where is this even bigger than in the United States? Yeah, great question. Um, you know, th this thing, Philippines, Thailand, Indi uh, um, India, um, where else was some big? Canada, oddly enough, Canada, big. Um, what else was another big market for us that was crazy? Uh, Australia, the UK, yeah. We, we can already see where this thing's starting to click and starting to grow. And um, we, have, we have so much more data now than we did in the early days of the UFC. So it's gonna, it's gonna help us out a lot. And then to keep the content machine growing, do you think for maybe season two in Abu Dhabi that you could keep the idea of like Dana White looking for a fight going around the, in other countries, maybe if you had the time for that? Uh, uh, Dana White looking for a fight type show for these other countries? Yeah, for Slap well, Fight, maybe in some other countries before uh, season two. Well, it's, it's this thing's so young and so new. You do two more seasons, you know, do a season one year, you do another season another year. And uh, I, th I think you got you to pump the brakes and slow it down a little bit. And uh, I think this will be perfect. Like, like I said to you guys earlier, watch what happens in the next two years with this thing. And if you look at the progression of... The UFC, we started on Spike TV with a deal. From Spike TV, we went to Fox. From Fox, we went to ESPN. And this will play out the same way, except I believe that the Spikes, Foxes, and ESPNs will end up being um, social platforms. That, every, everything's heading that way. So check this out. <clears throat> I had the, uh, the UNLV baseball team came in and toured the, the headquarters and then went to the to the PI. So the, I put them all in the in the media room at, at the PI and I was answering questions for them. They had probably asked me 10 questions, six of them were power slap, okay? So I'm like, holy shit, you guys are asking me. I said, how many of you have not seen power slap? Not one kid raised their hand. The whole team had seen it, right? And then I asked them, um, Who's the, who's the oldest guy on the team? The oldest guy on the team was 24 years old. <clears throat> I said, how many of you watched it on TV? Not one person. These fucking kids do not watch TV. So there was a lot of criticism um, about the TV ratings. These people are so full of shit, it's, it's fucking... First of all, what do any of these fucking people know about TV ratings, number one? And like I told you... The thing averaged 317,000 viewers on TBS with zero advertising from the network. Zero, right? We held 50% of the AEW audience. And the night that Kyrie moved over to Dallas and, the and Dallas played the Clippers that night, that game was on ESPN. What had more publicity and attention on it than Kyrie moving to Dallas? That game did 570,000 viewers. We did 317,000 at the same exact time in that game. That was on ESPN, and we were on TBS. We were number two with, with men on all of television that night. They were number one. That's an incredible fucking number, especially when this thing skews so much younger, and none of these people are watching TV. These kids don't watch TV. None of them. They watch their phones or they watch shit on the computer. Again, you mentioned the TV numbers, and I'm glad you did. With those ratings, do you think that maybe, not that it doesn't matter, but now that you know where you can pivot for season two and maybe just make it a, a specific social, I know you have that two-year deal with Rumble, but maybe, some, maybe it could just be a TikTok exclusive going in the future or something like that. Yeah, I don't know how this thing's going to play out. You know, we, we're, we're fucking thrilled with the Rumble deal. We're, we're very happy to be on Rumble, and they're, they're the perfect platform for us right now. You know, like I said, this whole thing has been like a, you know, 
several month test, you know, because we go back to last March when we really started kicking this thing around and, and playing with it. So this has all been a test. There's no doubt. I mean, you don't have to be a fucking rocket scientist to figure out where this thing should air and where it should be. Um, so we're in the right place at the right time. Rumble is our Spike TV when we started on Spike. Literally perfect. Perfect for us. I'm thrilled. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, just, just a quick one, Dana. What did you think of the John Davis and Azael knockout when he actually fell and like yeah, hit his head was, on the table? It was unbelievable. First of all, if you watch the, the, the season, um, how many of you in here actually watched the season? Did anybody actually watch the season? Yeah, handful of you. So if you watch the season, that was one of the storylines that, that, that plays out during the show. You know, Azael was a nightmare at the house, but every time he showed up, he delivered and he won. You know, he got here. He deserved to be here. And uh, that was an incredible knockout. So th the way a lot of these storylines played out tonight, it was it's, it's crazy. It's amazing. And do you think we're going to see Russell versus AJ too? Russell versus? Uh, AJ. Static. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, these are all... Let me throw this one at you. I don't make fights the night of the fight, so uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Uh, hey, Dana. Hey, buddy. Um, I spoke to one ringside physician a couple of months ago who said at that time there wasn't enough data to say one way or another whether slap fighting or power slap is safe. But after the way that this season has played out, are you happy with the safety aspect of, of the sport? Was I happy with what? The oh, that, that, that's the only thing that matters to us. First, first comes safety, then comes finding talent, then comes the, the live uh, event in the TV. Is that something you'd still want to tweak? Tweak? Yeah. Yeah, I think as, as this thing continues to evolve, we'll all get smarter, we'll, know, we'll, we'll all know more about it. But the thing that you have to understand when we talk about safety, and I, can't, I just can't understand how people can't wrap their heads around this, but in this sport, they get to defend themselves. Okay, 300 to 400 punches a fight is what a boxer takes, right? And that's before, f forget about all the sparring he did just to get there, okay? The amount of punishment that those guys take. And, and, and when you watch some of the fights, the, the wars that went on tonight over at the Virgin, right? These guys come in and take three or less slaps per event, and they go through the same exact medical testing that all these guys do. And boxing, and the time that, the Zufa era UFC has existed. There's been zero deaths and zero serious injuries. There's been 34 deaths in boxing. So if you really want to go after something, right, and you really want to point the finger and go, we need to do better at this and we need to clean this up, boxing is the sport that you need to go after. And I'm not trying to throw them under the bus. This is a fucking fact, you know? And the people that are talking this shit about the health and safety have an agenda, don't like slap, or are uneducated about combat sports, or want attention. One of the people I spoke to about safety was a neuroscientist, and he was, he was really against it, but he was citing the fencing, uh, uh, the fencing response, where your arms kind of stiffen. Right. But I don't know if it's a quirk of me coming here tonight. I didn't see any of that tonight. Is, 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 the, have the rules changed, or what, why didn't we no, really no, no. see that tonight? So, so, so here's the thing. When you hear about these guys that's a neurological doctor or, you know, one of these guys, I bet if you did your research, I bet they don't like football either. And I bet they don't like boxing. And they probably don't like hockey. Uh, and, and they probably don't like MMA. These are guys that are saying nobody should be allowed to take a blow to the head. Then you start getting into telling grown adults what they can and can't do which is fucking ridiculous and completely un-American, in, in, in my opinion. Um, but these people exist. So it's easy to throw out, you know, somebody's writing a story about slap, and it's like, so you get this guy that starts saying, oh, they, they land in the this, that, and the brain injuries and all this other shit, but they don't say, oh, and by the way, this guy doesn't want people playing football or doing all these other sports either. But I guarantee you that's probably the case. But tonight, why, why did we not see any of the fencing response? Has, has the safety improved, or is it just like a more slap fight? Is there adhering to the rule set that is laid out that we had in front of our desks earlier? Well, I, I think what's happening in what you saw tonight, those of you, how many of you were here for the March event? 
one guy. That's fucking hilarious. Um, the March event was a shit show, okay? We didn't know what we were doing. The commission didn't know what they, what they were doing. And most of the guys who were competing didn't know what they were doing. It, it was a test run so we could see how this thing kind of plays out. Because before then, we'd all only seen it on the internet. None of us were at a live slap event or had ever put one on before that. And, you know, we went through the test. And, and realistically, Darius and, and, and Wolverine really helped us a lot in, in, in putting together the rules and teaching the fighters what to do and, and, and how to train and, and, and how to stand properly and how to swing and how to slap so there, there wasn't a lot of clubbing and a lot of, you know, flinching and, and, and big mistakes. I wouldn't say that the, that the safety of it has improved in any way, shape, or form. I mean, from day one, we went above and beyond to make sure that this thing was safe. Um, I would just say that the, the, the participants are getting better. And, I mean, people are still saying now, holy shit, look at the... Me and Rogan were talking about this like three weeks ago. The level of talent in the UFC right now just seems to get better and better and better every year. And... You know, so it's going to happen here too. Guess what though? People are going to get hit and people are going to get knocked out. This is a combat sport. And here's the thing too. When the people that say you shouldn't call this a sport and it's definitely not a combat sport and all this shit. If you can get knocked out, it's a combat sport. I know you really like the social numbers, one of the reasons you got into it. But like tonight, the live experience was pretty impressive. People wanting to get tickets. Like how... Um, blown away with you, with you, with the live event experience out there. Did you just say the live experience was excellent? I, I thought it was, yeah. Well, thank you, thank you. And uh, now, now about selling tickets, like like I said to her earlier, it's it's this is all still a work in progress for us. We got we got a we got a lot of stuff to figure out. Ten, the show is a complete success. Tonight was a complete success in every way that it could be successful. But now we got to dig in and we got to we got to figure out a lot of stuff, and there's a lot of work to do still. I want to really put you on the spot now, but what's your problem with golf? Uh, that's a great question. Just not my thing. Not my thing. I hate it. think it's boring. Um, I wouldn't want to go walk around a fucking golf course all day and fucking hit a ball into a hole. It's just not my thing. But millions of people love it. So you know what I do? I don't watch it. I don't play it. And I don't pay any attention to it. You know what I also don't do? I don't run around fucking telling people, you shouldn't be fucking doing this, it sucks. And buy. Do your thing, you know? When, when you get these lunatics that zero in on something and start telling grown adults that they shouldn't be doing it, you're, you're a bit fucking nutty. There's something a little wrong with you. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of that for Power Slap. But, like I said the other day at the, uh, at the press conference, these freaks have literally helped me blow, blow this thing up and turn it into a machine over the last eight weeks. So fire away. Knock yourself out. Keep going. New York Times writing stories. I love it. I love when they write stories. The looniest, nuttiest fucking people in the world. I love when they write stories. Thanks, Dana. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, having a UFC event and a Powers Lab event at the same day is there something we can expect seeing again? Does it make sense for you? Did it work out good for you and your whole team? I, I, I would believe that my team would murder me if I do this again. Uh, there will be a coup over at the office and I will be overthrown. I can't keep doing this to my people. No, it's been a rough, been a rough couple months and yes, I would probably not do this again. But maybe I will. Who knows? I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. But, uh, yeah, these people have been getting murdered over the last se several weeks. Okay. Uh, there's a Brazilian fighter called Zuluzinho. He fought in Pride back those days. And now he fights uh, slap tournaments in Russia. Is, would he be a good name for the next season in Abu Dhabi? I don't know. I mean, that, that's what I'm interested to find out. I mean, obviously tonight um, I'm laying it out there and letting people know you know, right now it's tough to get people into the United States with all the crazy shit that's going on in the world. Um, but we can get everybody into Abu Dhabi. So I can literally find the best talent from all over the world, fly them in, and do season two. So I'm looking forward to it. And maybe, maybe he is a guy for us.
Por favor, last one for me. Uh, Rafael Sunson, he retired tonight. At oh, the, did he really? I didn't know that. He did. Uh, I would just like to, to hear some uh, words from you about him, how important it was for him and UFC. He's a nice guy. Um, obviously, he, he held a very high ranking in that division for a long time. Was right there. Was always, like, right on the cusp. And, uh, but... You know, great guy, great competitor. We were happy to have him here, and uh, I wish him all the best in his retirement. You guys done with me? Yep. Just a couple for, for me, Dana. It was kind of piggybacking on his when he was asking that if you would do a slap on the same night as a fight night. Mm -hmm. um, long term, how closely do you want slap, like, kind of associated with UFC? I mean, obviously, UFC has a huge reach, and to get this kind of launched, it made sense to, to marry the two. But... Just kind of talk about the pluses and, and negatives of, of maybe kind of do you want these two brands to be real closely associated or do you think it's important that, that they live separately? Like, like what is kind of your idea on the relationship between the two? Yeah, well, you know, obviously I'm involved in both. So um, they're always going to be closely associated as long as I'm involved in both of them. Um, but, you know, the thing is shown – that, that, that it obviously can stand on its own. I mean, it's beating the UFC on the UFC's platform, which is fascinating. Um, did I say that tonight already? Did I tell you that the, like, the worst post? For, yeah. So, um, there's a much bigger story to this, building like this whole sports platform right now that I'll tell you guys when it's ready to tell you, but... Um, yeah, no, I got I got a lot of shit going on, so I don't I don't I don't think that we're really aligning this with the UFC. The only thing that really aligns with the UFC is that I'm involved in both of them. And then just last one, uh, Oscar had asked some of the fighters about because you had mentioned like tweaking some rules and stuff, and so he had asked them if they had any opinions. And I thought AJ's was pretty um, interesting. He said that on the first slap, if a guy gets hit and is deemed he's done. But if he's deemed still good enough where, like, he shouldn't take another shot, but he can throw one, so that that way you don't lose without getting to throw a shot, I guess I thought that was interesting. What is your thought on it, or do you think that creates suspense that, that you can yeah. be done after one shot? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And, and yes, it, it, it's uh, the fact that you do get to slap back. If you're, if you're well enough to slap back, you know, it's just not a one and done. And that was one of the... Um, I had this argument with Kevin Ioli tonight earlier. Um, you know, Ioli was like, nah, this is, but, you know, the guy who wins the coin toss wins the fight. One slap and it's over. You saw tonight that that's not the case. Um, you know, it, it's a lot more competitive than, than, than people think. And, and, and tonight couldn't have shown that any better. I mean, Vern destroys everybody when he hits him. AJ took that shot, was able to recover, and actually knocks Vern out. It's just, yeah. But, but great question, and the answer is yes. Yeah. It, it's one of, the, one of the cool, fun things about the rules. That it? Seriously, I appreciate you guys coming tonight. I know I, I beat on the media a lot, but it, it, mean, it means a lot to me that you guys came tonight, and uh, I really appreciate it. Have a good one.